fist the dagger. G'day guys, JB here coming at you with another Legends Profile video. Trying to get a few of these out where I can. It has been a couple of weeks since the most recent video, so I thought it was due for another update. Of course, we've covered many players throughout the series. We started with Dennis Johnson, and of course we've had Kevin McHale, Dennis Rodman, Ben Wallace, Dwight Howard, Paul Arizon, Sam Jones, Nate Thurmond, uh, Bobby Dandridge, Bobby Jones, Sidney Moncrief, and Joe Dumas. And of course, this week, this instalment will be the legendary Jason Kidd. Of course, Jason Kidd of the Dallas Mavericks coming off the NBA Finals, their third NBA Finals appearance, uh, falling short, of course, to the Boston Celtics. But Jason Kidd, a big part of two of those three finals runs for the Dallas Mavericks. One of them as a player, one of them as a coach. And today we're going to reflect back over his time as a player, not only as a member of Dallas, but certainly as a member of New Jersey and a member of the Phoenix Suns. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's take a look back at the career of Jason Kidd. Staking his case as the last true pure point guard the league has seen, Let's take a look back at the career of Jason Kidd. He's a one-time champion, five-time All-NBA first-team selection, a one-time All-NBA second-team selection, a four-time All-Defensive first-team selection, a five-time All-Defensive second-team selection, a ten-time All-Star, co-rookie of the year, all-rookie first-team selection, and five-time assist leader. He finished top ten in MVP voting five times, top five in MVP voting twice, was a one-time runner-up MVP. In the regular season, he played 1,391 games, averaging 36 minutes per game. He averaged 12.6 points, 6.3 rebounds, 7.8 assists, 1.9 steals, and 0.3 blocks on 2.9 turnovers. He shot 40% from the field, 34.9% from deep, and 78.5% from the free throw line. In the NBA playoffs, he played 158 games, averaging 38.5 minutes per game. He averaged 12.9 points, 6.7 rebounds, 8 assists, 1.9 steals, and 0.3 blocks on 2.8 turnovers. He shot 39.1% from the field, 32.2% from deep, 78.1% from the free throw line. In the NBA Finals, played 16 games, averaging 41.1 minutes per game. He averaged 15.4 points, 5.8 rebounds, 7.8 assists, 1.4 steals, and 0.6 blocks on 3.2 turnovers. He shot 39.2% from the field, 32.9% from deep, and 76.7% from the free throw line. Depending on which lens you choose to view Jason Kidd's career will depend on how you see him as a player both during his career and in hindsight. During the time of his career, he proved to be one of the last true point guards the game has seen, capable of leading on the offensive side of the court whilst proving to be a key defensive piece on the other. A player whose contributions to the point guard position would likely be highlighted more had it not been for John Stockton, Gary Payton, Steve Nash, and Chris Paul. If Kidd's career is looked back on it with modern eyes, you find a player who was a triple-double machine, a clear key defensive guard with serious length, but would struggle to hit water if he fell out of a boat. Such was the level of inefficiency he brought from a scoring perspective. As such, you can argue that Kidd is the perfect example as to why comparing different generations of players is nothing short of a pointless exercise to shine as to why appreciating the game throughout the years is pivotal to any true understanding of it. A career field goal percentage of 40% ranks him second last of all 149 players to have played in 1,000 games. On any level, that's pretty hard to justify. But what isn't hard to justify is the fact that Kidd would probably be remembered as the best pure point guard of all time had it not been for John Stockton. Kidd sits second only to Stockton in both career assists and steals, and factoring in his role as the team's leader over a decade along with the ability to guard through to the small forward and deliver a triple double on demand you have a player that defines what it means to be a pure point guard maybe the only downside for kid is that if he played either a generation before or after his career timeline he would be remembered far more fondly earlier and he remains a tenacious defender and a facilitating guard able to support on the glass 
later and he remains a triple double threat that gets told to stay in the corner and shoot when the ball isn't in his hands. Drafted second overall in the 1994 NBA draft behind big dog Glenn Robinson, Kidd entered the league as the brightest guard prospect among his peers. Followed by fellow co-rookie of the year Grant Hill, Kidd would prove to be the greatest player out of his draft class, which also consisted of the likes of Juwan Howard, Eddie Jones, Jalen Rose, Aaron McKee, Monty Williams, Vashon Leonard, and Lawrence Funderburk. Many argue that while Kidd was clearly a standout among his rookie class, he was maybe the third or fourth best first year player. However, of all the players that were able to mature into the league and have a genuine impact on winning basketball games, Kidd soon stood out as maybe the biggest key of them all. Dallas improved from 13 wins to 36 wins with Kidd at the helm, and with Jamal Mashburn and Jim Jackson by his side forming the three Jays, Dallas looks set to ride back into contention sooner rather than later. Despite his first career All-Star selection in just his second season, a decline in the Mavericks' success, coupled with injuries and soured relations with coaching staff, saw Kidd on his way out of Dallas and over to the Phoenix Suns by the end of his third year. This saw Kidd almost restart his career, having used his first three seasons as a blueprint of what not to do. It proved key. Returning to the All-Star game as the starting point guard of a 56-win Suns team, Kidd was able to couple with Suns legend Kevin Johnson and future two-time MVP Steve Nash in a dynamic point rotation to set the tone for the next decade of the NBA. Kidd would remain with Phoenix for the coming seasons, while Nash would pit stop in Kidd's old stomping grounds at Dallas to build his game before returning to Arizona to launch the peak of his career some half a decade later. Leading Phoenix to the playoffs in every season as a son, including perennial all-star, all-NBA and all-defensive selections and 50 wins in all three full seasons, Kidd established himself as the next king of the hill of all point guards as the likes of John Stockton and Gary Payton began to decline from their lofty peaks. However, injuries and serious off-court concerns reared their head at times to take Preston over the quality of basketball that the consensus top five player on the planet was bringing each and every night. Despite all of his success, Kidd's time with Phoenix was over. It was time for a third change of scenery. It came on the East Coast in a trade with the rising guard Stefan Marbury. Kidd was off to New Jersey in a move that breathed new life not only into the career of Jason Kidd, but for the life of the Nets franchise. Still delivering one of the most underrated peak periods for any point guard throughout history, Kidd would hit the ground running in pursuit of competing for a championship. Playing next to Kenyon Martin, Keith Van Horn, Kerry Kittles and a rookie Richard Jefferson, Kidd would again lead a team to 50 wins while personally achieving another All-Star, All-NBA and All-Defensive first team season. This time, however, the season would not be capped in the conference playoffs as the Nets and Kidd made their first of back-to-back -back trips to the NBA Finals. Coupled with a runner-up MVP finish to Tim Duncan, the only thing left to cap off the season and deliver what would go down as arguably the most perfect trade in league history was the Los Angeles Lakers. A team consisting of arguably the greatest one-two punch ever in Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, who were just four games away from a three-peat. It was not to be as the Lakers finished the playoffs in a sweep. Despite the loss and a solid performance from Kidd, some saw this as just the start of a young, talented core with a great floor general. The sky was the limit. Even the following year, despite Kidd making the All-NBA and All-Defensive second teams with an All-Star selection, the perceived form slump still saw New Jersey collect 49 wins and route back to the finals. The only pitfall was the Spurs, and a peak Tim Duncan on a playoff run that can be argued as arguably the greatest of all time. While the Nets under Kidd managed to take the series to six games, it wasn't enough, and it would be the last look at an NBA Finals floor to this date. The Nets, however, didn't necessarily bottom out, nor did the performance of Kidd decline to the point of no return. The Nets would take the eventual champion Detroit Pistons to seven games in 2004, make the playoffs in 2005 as Vince Carter made his way from Toronto, were eliminated by the eventual champion Miami Heat in 2006, and were eliminated by the eventual finalists from the Eastern Conference, the Cleveland Cavaliers, in 2007. Post the NBA Finals of 2003, Kidd kept the Nets in the postseason while collecting three further All-Defensive nods, one further All-NBA selection, and two further All-Star appearances. However, despite yet another All-Star selection in 2008, Kidd's time to return West had arrived. Returning to where it all began as an NBA prospect, Kidd was traded to Dallas to play alongside the legendary Dirk Nowitzki. This would be the move that set the ball in motion for the eventual championship team in 2011. Needing to be a ball mover and a defensive stopper as a guard while feeding Dirk, Kidd was able to be the conductor of an orchestra that had gone from West contender to finals participant 
to 67 wins and eliminated in the first round in a very short space of time. With the eventual inclusions of the likes of JJ Barea, Sean Marion, Tyson Chandler, and the continued support of Jason Terry, Dallas in 2011 were able to overcome the now infamous Heatles Big Three in the NBA Finals to secure their first title in franchise history. More importantly, each piece of their puzzle was finally rewarded for their hard work, none more than Dirk and Kidd. From starting as a top draft pick, to leaving the team following issues, to a reunion some 10 years later that culminated in a championship. After a lockout short in 2012 season, Kidd would make one more run on the East Coast alongside a Carmelo Anthony for the New York Knicks, playing in 76 games. Completing his run in the second round of the playoffs as a rotational six-man, Kidd left the game as the second greatest pickpocket and distributor in whole numbers the league has ever seen. Along with two Olympic gold medals in Sydney and Beijing, Kidd was selected to the NBA's 75th anniversary team, has had his number five retired by the New Jersey Nets, and was inducted to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 2018.